well, well, well. I like to know. Are you really ready for some super dynamite soul? Peace, peace, peace. This is DJ Rock Love Nation's number one DJ. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Saturday. It's 7 p.m. on the East Coast. It's 6 p.m. on the Central Side and on the West Coast. It is 5 p.m. And wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever you are, we're asking everyone to come in the room. And I have shorts on my mic. That's new. Okay. All right. Another short. We're back. Um, wherever you are in the country, I want everybody to follow what we're establishing now is the three rules of watching the Rockwell Radio Show. The three rules are like, share, tag somebody, and most importantly, rule number three is if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We need all your subscriptions. We need your support because this in particular episode is one of very, very closeness to me. It is something that actually almost didn't happen. We almost weren't going to have an episode this week. We almost were just going to let it go because my rule is if I don't have anything of substance to say or add to the conversation, silence is golden. Until... I was scrolling on my phone like I tend to do and seeing what's going on in this great nation of ours. And I saw my big brother, Willie Muhammad, make a comment that we'll get to in just a moment. And it inspired me to say, no, there is something that needs to be said. We are watching the decay and the dissolve of society all around us. We are watching the fall of America all around us. The social, the social fabric, if you will, of our country is crumbling right in our face. The question is, what tools do we have to solve it? Brother mentioned some things that were very useful, that are right and exact in the way of tools. I wrote some thoughts down, but I'll just kind of say it the way I'm thinking it. When I look at the violence and the way that people are losing their lives over next to nothing, we realize that we are in the end of days. Or is it better said that we just have lost our passion? We've lost our feeling, our sensitivity for our human fellow human being. What is going on? How is it that we have now began to live in a world where people can die over being cut off in traffic? Where people can die for stepping on their shoes. Well, people can die behind the argument. Well, people can die over a bowling ball game like happened recently here in Atlanta. We have some solutions that we want to share with you. And again, speaking of share, I want to go over again the three rules of watching the Rockwell Radio Show. Rule number one. If you're watching on Facebook, go ahead and hit that like and share and go ahead and tag somebody. Lastly, those of you watching on YouTube, get on over there and hit that subscribe button because we have an important message. Let's, and we don't have to look far to make our case that society is gone to H-E double hockey sticks, as they say. We don't have to go far. All we have to do is pick up the phone and read the headlines. Matter of fact, Let's look at some of the headlines in front of us right now that prove my point. Argument leads to fatal shooting right here in Georgia at a Walmart. An argument leads to a fatal shooting 
What are we doing? Let's look at the next one. Peace, Brother James. Welcome, welcome. Another headline. A cashier, again, here in Georgia, fatally shot after an argument over the over a face mask at a Georgia supermarket. What are we doing? It's all in the headlines. Let's, let's look at another one. Number three. In this one, a fight over a spilled drink. Somebody spilled their drink and it led to a fatal shooting. Spilling your drink. Where are we in time? Where are we in time when this is our reality? Look at, let's look at two more. An argument at a gas station. Well, I might get that because the prices of gas, I, 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 I might I understand it. <laughs> Over a gas station. And last but not least, an argument over barbecue sauce led to a teenager, an employee, being shot in the head. Brothers and sisters, what are we doing? What are we doing? But more importantly, what can we do? What should we do? Our people are losing our lives. And I don't have to tell you that the vast majority of those stories are happening to people that look like you and I. And again, I wasn't going to do a show until I saw Brother Willie's comments. He had this to say. Watch this. Peace. Just wanted to take a moment to share some words. If you know about me, you know that one of the many things that I do to try to make my positive contribution to the community is conflict resolution. And I've been thinking about this whole situation with Kanye West and now D.L. Hughley. I saw online that one of Kanye West's friends approached D.L. Hughley uh, coming out of a restaurant. And, you know, it's, it, it could have gotten very volatile. You know, luckily D.L. Hughley's um, people called for the security. But what I've noticed with conflict resolution is that there's always one person who pretty much knows both parties that have this conflict, right? And this one person can make a call to both of them to get them on the phone or even at a physical meeting to sit down and have a conversation to address this. And that is so key in this time because in this social media age and internet age, now even more so, people are talking to one another, but not, they're talking about one another through social media and not to one another. That was my brother, Willie Muhammad. And before we bring him on, again, we want to ask everybody to observe the three standing rules of the Rockwell Radio Show. Hit that like and share button, tag somebody, and last but not least, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We're going to bring brother on and later on to join us in this conversation about conflict resolution and the fact that nobody has to die. We're going to be joined in the second half by our sister, student minister Zarifa Mohammed, who is the student minister in Athens, Georgia, is going to join us in the second half. But first, please welcome my brother, who is the student minister the student representative of of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in Muhammad Mosque number 46 in New Orleans. We always talk about this, is New Orleans or or New Orleans? (laughs) Louisiana. He is also the host of the podcast that airs every Sunday at 2 p.m. I have a testimony. Please welcome back to the Rockwell Radio Show, my brother, Brother Willie Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, my brother, and thank you for this invitation, man. Wa alaikum salam, my brother. Man, thank you for coming back. Thank you for coming back. Appreciate it, man. And uh, glad to have you. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful show. Intro and everything, man. You all are doing a great job. Allahu Akbar. Let's let's get into it, my brother. Man, we the time that we're living in is 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 nothing less than biblical. When our people are losing their mind like this, when they don't have to do it, let's start by giving a definition, Brother Willie, to this term that we've been throwing around, conflict resolution. How do you define it? And why is it something that you personally feel so strongly about? 
Well, uh, simply put, if we were talking to the young brothers and sisters who are in the street, we would say conflict resolution. Um, the slang would be squashing beefs, right? Come on, right. If we were talking to people who know we just know conflict as the party that has some issue in resolution, how to resolve a conflict. And, 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 and the goal is how to resolve a conflict without the use of violence, right? Come on, right? And one of the reasons why it is so important here in the city of New Orleans, we've been doing this work of conflict resolution since 2011. Come on. And what also added more emphasis to this work is when the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan decided to take the model that we use here with the New Orleans peacekeepers started by Captain Emeritus uh, Dennis Muhammad. The minister, the minister said we that the 10,000 fearless, the model for conflict resolution would be the uh, model that we've been using here in the city of New Orleans. So in addition to it being the minister's will and desire for us to implement conflict resolution initiatives all around the country, we want to see what he wants to see done. And, 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 and I still say we still have some a lot of work to to do. You know, we have done trainings in over 25 cities. Come on. And, but nonetheless, we still have some that that's just planting seeds from my from my view. But we still have a lot of work to do as it relates to conflict resolution. Come on, brother. And that's a lot of great work. A lot of great work. Now, as I talked about how really your piece inspired this entire episode today. One of the first things I thought about, Brother Willie, after I heard your words is I went to the Bible mm. and I pulled up what's one of my favorite scriptures that I think will serve as the basis and really the foundation of this entire episode. Let's look at that Bible scripture real quick. It says, Brother Willie, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Mm. Let me ask you this, brother. Why do you think, Brother Willie, that peacemakers are so favored in the eyes of God that's a great question man and I haven't I haven't thought about that but a brother told me I was talking to Captain Dennis Muhammad and a minister suggested talking about changing the name to peacemakers how about that instead of peacekeepers because he said you can't keep a peace that you haven't made hmm. you know I think in regards to why they're so blessed because what is peace the Mosaic Elijah Muhammad teaches that 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 the actual word Islam at the root of it is peace. Come on. And that's because that's what Allah wants for us as human beings. And it's so important for us to be peacemakers because conflict is inevitable. You're going right. to have conflict. Right. So if we're going to have conflict, it is extremely important that human beings learn how to manage that conflict. And that's what we're struggling at. So when you saw those dynamic headlines, that you open up with when you see human beings taking the life of another human being over a mask that should be worn which is with mandate when you see human beings taking the life of someone over barbecue sauce at a fast food restaurant on, man. or over on, a man. drink of water we're looking at human beings who of course as the Mozambi Elijah Muhammad the album Mr. Louis Farrakhan teach that the, the root illness is 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 self-hatred like Listen. when you look at the word kill k-i-l right when you when you drop the k we get ill which is short mm. for illness so there's an illness and so for a people who have that illness we have to have some type of mechanism that can help us to address that so when you see us taking the life of one another over something like this that's an example that we do not know how to properly resolve conflict wow brothers and sisters in the house with us is our brother, student minister, brother Willie Muhammad out of Muhammad Mosque number 46. And he is also the host of the Sunday podcast. I have a testimony which airs every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, big brother, wow. Um, before I continue, let me remind everybody that you are watching the Rockwell Radio Show. And if you are tuned in, be sure to practice the three steps of watching the Rockwell Radio Show. Go ahead and hit that like and share button, up tag somebody, and come on, subscribe on YouTube today. Because we are talking about the fact that conflict excuse me, conflict resolution is possible and nobody has to die. Brother Willie, let's continue if it's okay. Now, can you share, and you, you've, you've obviously been doing this for quite some time. 
Can you share a story? And for instance, where you personally intervened in a conflict and diffused a situation that possibly could have went deadly. Well, one of the stories that I can share, there's two. If, if people go and Google the New Orleans Peacekeepers, the Times Picayune, which is the major newspaper here in the city of New Orleans, did a cover story on us. And may Allah be pleased with him. One of the brothers, and we saying his name now because most of the time we keep it confidential, but we're saying his name because he agreed. But this brother, um, he was a, a radio DJ like yourself. And he, his, his entourage and another entourage began to start exchanging some words about creative differences or creative endeavors that they were participating in, right? Their names, like one, his DJ name and another DJ's name was quite similar. And they were, one party was concerned that this DJ might end up getting gigs because people might think that they are the same, right? right. And if you read in the article, he talked about how threats were made, where people were saying when they see him, they were going to have their AK-47. So another wow. DJ here wow. in the city, his name is Big Abe, who's uh, one of, he was a morning DJ on one of the morning radio shows. He reached out to me and we were able to bring both entourages together here in our mosque and were able to get them to resolve the conflict. And as you know, with hip hop beefs, oftentimes it's not so much the primary uh, celebrities is oftentimes the entourages because the entourages have members who want to do something to prove their loyalty to the celebrity and hoping that they can move up in the hierarchy within that entourage. So we came here, you know, of course, with conflict resolution, you have the moments where it gets heated in it, in, it, in, the, in the in the in the passionate discussion. Right. A lot blessed us to work through that. And those brothers ended up working together afterwards. The conflict. Praise be to and Allah. That's Praise be to Allah. Come on, matter of fact, let me get out of hand. Praise let me get out Allah. of hand, brother. That us being involved saved a life. Wow, wow. You're tuning into the Rockwell Radio Show. My host, excuse me, my guest is Brother Willie Muhammad. And later on in the second half of the show, we'll be joined by Sister Zarifa Muhammad, who is the interim national director of the 10K Fearless. And also she is the student minister of Athens Study Group in Georgia, here in Georgia. I want to ask a two-part question, Brother Willie, here. Uh, and I, I want to go back to this video that you did that inspired me to do this episode, in fact. Um, you touched on the Kanye DL thing in that clip. Um, regardless to how we feel about DL, regardless to how we feel about Kanye, there's still obviously two black men that are feuding publicly which is not good and it can lead to obvious problems that we see again and again and again. So let me ask you this. What is it about our culture, Brother Willie, that we find entertainment in beef? Mm. And number two, why are the people who have the access to be peacemakers reluctant to intervene? Mm. You know, it goes back to what the Mozam Elijah Muhammad said was at the root of quarreling amongst our people. And he said that it's self-hatred and that self-hatred manifests in different ways, depending on people's level of education and things like this. You know, when we started doing this conflict resolution, we started off just thinking about us just only getting calls for young brothers and sisters who are in the street or in right. street organizations and neighborhoods. But as we begin to start getting involved with this work, we've had to do conflict resolution between business owners. How between, about that? Between someone who was a lawyer and somebody who was a businessman, between members of members of conscious community organizations, right? So it shows that th it is needed for us to actually have it. And so even though with all, all of us are recovering so-called Negroes. Come on. So even That's with awesome. all of the Islam that we may know, all of the Christianity we may know, all of the 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 uh the, the man you netta we may know or a out of what all of that stuff we still have it and depending on how deep our love is or how shallow our love is somebody can scratch us just a little bit and that so-called negro pops out right so out. this is why you see some people like think about it on, on social media we have seen i won't say their name but we've seen some of our up-and-coming new conscious leaders go at each other and you hear them go at each other and you're like man I can't believe they're going at each other like that because we still have that tendency 
in the back of our minds, right? Come on, so come on. Why? why do you see in regards to the second question, why don't we see more people who have this ability to be able to reach out? Also, we find our egos get involved. Come you know on. You know what I'm saying? Right. And Allah in the Holy Quran talks about how Satan excites our vain desires. Mm. But with this social media now, it excites our vain desires. So we were already, most of us, not handling conflict resolution properly. But now with social media, you can get in contact with a celebrity. A celebrity may respond to your comment well, before social media. They didn't even know you exist. Wow. So now wow. This, this social media has making people take the easy route. Where instead of me sitting down and calling that brother, getting on, a, get, having somebody reach out to them, I'm just going to go at them at social media. Ooh. Why? Because we got millions of people on the sideline with the pop going saying, yeah, get him, Kanye. Yeah, get him, um, DL. And remember what the album Minister Louis Farrakhan, the guidance that he told to the hip hop artists when he spoke to them in the first hip hop uh, convention. Yes, he sir. said that, remember, you all are leaders. And when you have leaders, you have followers. And you, one of your followers can be upset about somebody that's, that you're beefing with. And it's no longer just you and the person that you're beefing with. Now it is your followers. Listen. Who now they get it. Like, it's lucky. I'm thankful that the brother that rolled up on, on um, D.L. Hughley, he was not one of those zealots. Well, because some people would have rolled in and say, I'm just going to knock D.L. Hughley out and put it on video and then say, Kanye, look what I did for you. Look at that, man. And stuff like that can easily happen. And it and it has happened. And it does happen with celebrities and also not with celebrities. And every time I see these celebrities online going back and forth to one another on Twitter, on YouTube, making videos on Instagram, I'm like, they could easily call somebody and say, hey, I heard this comment or someone sent me this that you were quoted saying this, I'm calling to find out what's the issue. And you will be amazed at what a call would do in the right spirit. Come because on, sometimes listen. some of us say that we're trying to resolve conflict and we approach people like, hey man, I'm calling you. What is it What is it that you had smart to say about me? That's not the way. The way is to say, hey brother, Teach. You know, I, I saw your comments. I want to know what the issue is. You know? And then begin to start talking. And at the very beginning, brother, at the very root of many of these conflicts is over misunderstanding and misperception. I thought he said, I felt this, uh, whatever. I misunderstood, but a simple conversation. And think about this now. How many of you have done this? You've ever been on YouTube wasting time and you see a headline, uh, such and such, such and such says this rapper is scary or such and such smacks this rapper right. and it begins to be clickbait and then when you watch the video you're like that's not necessarily what this what person happened, right? so it happens like that and what begins to start happening is that our ignorance our inability to properly resolve conflict and our emotions begin to be used by others for the sake of clickbait and getting views so people can make money off of social media but people are really dying I, I don't, I'm not going to call us and I'm going off script for this one. I, I just swear we're going to go off script. But I only got one more question before we go to the half. Mm -hmm. There's a popular YouTuber, a DJ, I, I won't even call him a DJ to embarrass our culture. Um, the difference between hearing opposed to listening can cause conflict. Brother Lawrence is 100% correct. Mm -hmm. This particular DJ um, has guest on the show and he uses his show to feed the negative to feed the the beef to feed the bs and people get locked up after appearing on his cat show mm -hmm. and start beefs after appearing on his show so not only do we have the emotional baggage the mental baggage now we got to wrestle with vultures too who are throwing flames and throwing and and, and hiding their hand that's it man and that's the you know one of the uh and one of the courses that we've taken about conflict resolution, they talk about how there's always a third party. And they say oftentimes that third party is the person that's that's putting the batteries in, 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 in people's back. Come on, the person come that's on. bringing, say, hey, man, I was in a barbershop. Oh, hey, I heard them say this about you. 
instead of being the person to say, as we were taught in the nation of Islam, you know, we don't practice it as much as we should. But remember, we were taught in our training coming up that if somebody brought to you something negative about another brother, what you're you supposed do? to stop them and say, one second, bring them before that person and say, say what you said in, to this person before, as you told it to me. And see, that's how we get to the root of it. You know, that's how we get to the root of it. If we did that more as a community, we will begin to start resolving these conflicts. But, we, but, but what is beginning to start happening is that the violence is so bad in our community that people think that nobody wants to resolve it. And we don't realize mm. that there are people who are on the other end of that conflict. They really want to resolve it, but they don't think that the other person wants to resolve it. So they feel like I got it's on site when I see them on you know? site and that begins to start happening like you know what what we've realized with conflict resolution is that most people would like to resolve the conflict knowing and being able to walk away with their pride in some sense their ego to say we resolved it but i wasn't afraid of you and we're fine with that because our goal is as long as you all resolve it and and live and, and live because like you said nobody has to die but what what i've also sadly begin to start seeing brother brother dj Brother Vaughn, is that even some of those who are out there protesting and, de and decrying violence, some of us doubt the, uh, the, the effectiveness or the ability to, to peacefully resolve conflict. Wow. Even though we, we condemn and talk about violence. And when some, this is sometimes something that I do in the city of New Orleans when there's a murder or whatever and everybody's talking about the violence is so bad. I just make a post and say, listen, to all of you all who are upset about the violence here in the city, justifiably so, if you are really upset, can you do us a favor and just share this flyer? Can you share our promo? Come on, and right? Guess what? Right. I see less. I see less sharing and more complaining about the violence. Mm. And we don't realize that that we we have to do something. We have to create a culture. Like right now here in the city of New Orleans, I don't know if it's that in Atlanta. They have just brought what's the what's the black dude he played on uh the comedian he played on kevin hart show the slim dude he's a comedian but now he is the face for caesar's uh online gambling right well i wouldn't have no idea we're, we're, we're here in the city of new orleans brother you can't turn on the television without seeing one of those gambling commercials now mm -hmm. you can't turn on a radio without Absolutely. hearing one of those commercials now you can't drive down the streets of New Orleans without seeing one of those billboards now. And see, I said, what if the same was true about conflict resolution? Come but on. Every time we turned right. on the radio, every right. time we turned on the television, every time we saw was on social media, we saw at least one message promoting people, hey, conflict resolution. See, that wow. can begin to start creating the environment. Come on, let me get out of hand, brother. Come on. on. You are tuned in to the Rockwell Radio Show. This is DJ Rockwell, and my guest is none other than Brother Willie Muhammad. He's the student representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan there in the city of New Orleans, Louisiana. And he is also the host of the podcast, I Have a Testimony, which airs every Sunday at 2 p.m. Brother Willie, we have one more question before we go to break. I was doing some research just on general crime and what's going on there in your city. And uh, I was looking at NOLA.com, and I don't know if it's true or false, but NOLA.com printed that there in New Orleans, that, uh, and it's no secret, in New Orleans, it's, it's some cold cats in New Orleans now. 218 mean. murders uh, at the close of 2021. Mm -hmm. And according to NOLA.com, that's the highest it's been since Katrina. Yep. Now, I want to ask you, when you go out and work and uh, talk among the people, what are some of the common triggers or themes or reasons that you hear that are causing the situations that end up with our brothers and sisters losing their lives? If you get the opportunity, when you go back to NOLA, I want you to go and see this article that just took place where they just arrested a father who ended up shooting the, he ended up, mur well, he's alleged to have murdered the, the young man that murdered his son and his daughter. And when I watched that video, when I when I watched that news story, I said to myself, see, this is a, a, a sign or indicator of why 
one of the factors of why the murder rate in the city of New Orleans is so high is because many of the murders, they can break it down to st the people who have the stats in the city. Many of them are out of the spirit of retaliation. How about it? How and about that's it? one way. So what so what it showed is that people have less faith in the, the criminal justice system, bringing to justice or punishing those who have hurt their loved ones or killed them. So they take it on themselves. And then I never forget this verse, brother, that juvenile, the rapper from Hot Boys, he said on his song, 400 Degrees. He said this. He said, quote, how am I going to look running with some killers and backing down? How I'm going to look in front of my mm. people like a clown, the G code we live by it and we die by. It. Mm. And that's how some people feel. Like, look, man, you're going to let this dude, this dude just kill you. You saw, you saw the movie, uh, Minister Saudi. He, he didn't kill your cousin. But as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, and even in our holy book, retaliation is prescribed in some situations. Right. But the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that you all are practicing that principle of some of, over some of the silliest reasons. Come on now. It, it shouldn't be prescribed because mm. over, you got killed over a color of a rag. Mm. So it's natural for a human being to want to retaliate. The issue is what we are retaliating for. And that's why our people need conflict resolution, but our people also need to be taught who they are. Because when you grow to love yourself, you begin to start loving others. And that's one of the reasons. I go back to the word kill. You drop the K, you get the word ill. And the illness that black people have been affected by is the illness of self hatred which when you don't love yourself you don't see your value so what happens is it creates an environment where envy and jealousy can sprout up so you're seeing retaliation you're seeing uh people just envying and people just jealous and then you just got some people that got access to these guns and they just don't care don't care mm. wow wow our guest is brother willie muhammad and wow, again, we want to remind everyone of the three steps, the three rules of watching the Rockwell Radio Show. We need everybody to hit that like and share button. We need everybody to tag somebody. And last but not least, we are asking you to go ahead and subscribe to the Rockwell Radio Show. We are now up against the break. We want everybody to stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> This is your brother, brother Willie Muhammad, and I'm asking each and every one of you all to tune into the DJ Rockwell Show live online. Peace. Ah. Peace. This is your sister Aisha, the mental resurrectionist, hailing out of Baltimore, Maryland. Listen, whenever I'm online, I always tune into the Rockwell Radio Show. It's that hype. It's that dopeness, and you should tune in too. Peace to my brothers, David and DJ Rockwell for holding it down, locking it down, giving us those sounds. Love y'all. Peace. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Sister Latasha Muhammad, and when I'm online, I rock with the Rockwell Radio Show. Oh, okay, baby. I think we're in the right place. Uh, yeah, can you tell us what room Gat Turner is in, please? What, room, room 1930? Okay, thank you. Come on, baby. Let's walk. Let's walk. Let's be one of these rooms down here. I know. I know. I know. But he's going to be okay. You hear me? He's going to be okay. Gat yeah, is tough. He can make it. Somebody get a nurse. Call, call a doctor. Somebody do something. Call a doctor now. <laughs> yeah, baby, he's, stop crying. This is Gat. Gat, get up. Get up. Get up. Come on, Gat. You'll make it. You can make it, Gat. Get up. Tell him you're not dead. You're not dead. Gat Turner, tell him you're not dead. 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 I did. When we come about this quarantine, niggas better run my bread and run and tell that. To whoever just don't mix falsehood with actual facts or false prophets with the man the truth. Niggas got a little juice, ain't got no fruit. Niggas got a few hoes, ain't got no love. Just because we cuz don't make us blood and a lot of trust. Shit, fam ain't always who a nigga thought they was. Don't always do what you thought they do. No.
worldwide. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download the Final Call Radio app and take us everywhere. On your phone, on your computer, on your tablet, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also log on to FinalCall.com and click the Listen Live button. Or FinalCallRadio.com. Final Call, Final Call Radio. The official voice of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. We're back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> we want to welcome everybody back to the Rockwell Radio Show. We, our guest is Brother Student Minister Willie Muhammad. He is the representative of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan there in the city of New Orleans, Louisiana. And he is also the host of the podcast that runs every Sunday at 2 p.m. Of call, excuse me, the podcast called I Have a Testimony. But we're going to welcome someone else to the show. But before we do, we want to invite everyone to support the Rockwell Radio Show with your dollars, with your dimes, if you can, to help us stay on the air. You can go to PayPal right now and support us at Rockwell Radio. Again, that's dollar sign. Rockwell Radio, your support is welcomed. Your support is needed to keep us going. Lights, camera, action, we're here to help you. Now, let's get into welcoming for part two to this much needed conversation, conflict resolution. This is a sister I have known her and her family for many, many years. She has been a staunch soldier for Farrakhan. A beautiful believer and a again a beautiful sister that, that I'm honored to call sister. I mentioned at the outset she is the student minister there in Athens, Georgia, for that study group there. She is also serving currently as the assistant interim national director for the ten thousand fearless men and women. And last but not least, she's not the host of one podcast, Brother Willie, but the host of two podcasts. Podcast one is called the Nation Can Ride No Higher Than Its Woman. And the other podcast is aptly titled The 10,000 Fearless. Please welcome for the first time to the Rockwell Radio Show, my sister and yours, Marifa Muhammad. Praise be to Allah. I sound like. Walaikum um, salam. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, sir. But I am the co-host for the 10,000 Fearless National Podcast. Oh, okay, Podcast. okay. That, that part, that, no, didn't make it to me. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let's, let's start there. T tell us more, sister, about, and matter of fact, let's pretend like I don't know what the 10K Fearless is. I yes, want sir. to explain to my viewers, some of which, some of which who are from the hip hop community, DJs, MCs, etc. Explain to them what is the 10,000 Fearless Men and Women? Well, in 2015, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan um, made the statement that he would like to have, or he wanted 10,000 Fearless. He said, we have to be the ones to stand between the guns and the gangs. They are not bad youth, he said. They are youth that have ever been given a proper education and guidance and opportunity to make better make a so when he said that the uh, brother minister abdul sharif muhammad who's the southern regional representative of um, Minister um, farrakhan came back to atlanta and within 90 days he started the first 10,000 fearless house i bear witness right um, he wanted to follow the instructions of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan because the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan also told us to set up conflict resolution centers. Now, Brother Willie, as, as powerful as he is, I think was very, very humble in some of the things that he said. But we need to really call Brother Willie to set up the 10,000 fearless in every city that we have. Come on, come on now. Let me get out of hand. Every city. <laughs> That's a glowing endorsement, brother Willie. <laughs> Praise be to a lot. It's needed, man. Praise be to a lot. We don't, I mean, because conflict, just like brother was saying earlier, is that we have a lot of self hatred. Right. And if you can't right. love yourself, then how can you love your brother or sister? Come you on. don't even consider them your brother or sister. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, he said, 
and um, 10,000 fearless men and women are needed because it takes fearless men and women to help others work out their salvation by standing between the guns and the gangs and setting up conflict resolution centers. The 10,000 fearless would help slow down violence and the uh, fratricidal conflicts in the black community. Which means we're killing in our own families. We're killing mm. our cousins and our brothers. Mm. We're killing, I mean, anything that's in our community should be considered family, but we're so far from that. Mm. And Brother Willie mentioned about ego. Minister mm. Farrakhan said, God damns the, the ego. ego. Say Brother that. Come on. Brother Sharif come on. put it up in his office and said, You need to take your ego, put it in your back pocket, and sit on it. Because that's what's causing a lot of our problems or egos. That's how you can be manipulated by that third person that our brother was talking about. You know what? I want to ask you both this question because in the conversation thus far, we have seen these words used that are relative here. And it seemed to be a cancer in our community and I have a, a direct bearing on the subject. Pride and ego. Let me ask you both. What role do these two demons play as being opponents of conflict revolution, uh, resolution? It is, you know, um, as our sister said when she when she said ego, and, and remember I've heard people say that ego means edging God out. And we know yes. that as a, as a people, we already don't know the truth about God. You know what I'm saying? So we already starting off at a disadvantage. And, you know, think about the scripture when it talks about, when it talks about pride. But when you have people that are absent the love of themselves, ego takes over, when pride takes over, you know what I'm saying? And this is why we have to constantly understand this and learn how to resolve conflict. We always tell people resolving conflict does not mean you are afraid. When you go back and watch these mafia movies or some of these movies, you see that it, they get to a point where they begin to start realizing that violence is not good for their overall business. And what do they do? They come to the table and have a sit down. Come on. And that's what we come have on. to begin to start understanding because in the end, when you think about it, like, yo, what are you really killing somebody over? Brother, we have had conflict mediations where we've set people at the table and we strive to be proactive because listen to me, some people were watching this and say, man, them people don't want to squash no beef. We understand that some conflicts are like stage four cancer. Come on. You know, when, state, when cancer That's gets there, right. it's pretty much what it is, unless That's a right. law intervenes. But nonetheless, mm -hmm. we still will try. But what if we can stop those conflicts like the ones you mentioned about over a barbecue sauce, mm -hmm. over a man. glass of water? What if we can stop? We can what if we can stop those? But we've said at tables, brother, when we start questioning and get them to talking and say, yo, what is this beef about? Some people have literally stopped. And for the first time, it appears that they think about what they're involved in. And they say, man, I don't even know. Crazy. Go and watch some of the Breakfast Club interviews or go and watch Game did an interview. We started talking about the beef with him and 50. Right. He said that when he thought about it, he said he can't really tell what started it. But they've had shootouts and everything else when they don't even realize what, what caused it. Wow, wow, wow. You are tuned in to the Rockwell Radio Show. Sister Zarifa, before I come to you for your answer and your comment on that, I want to shout out to everyone in the chat room. Uh, I want to put, and I hope he's still watching, I want to particularly shout out Brother Paul Scott. That's right, so is uh, if you don't know who Paul Scott is, he is someone that you all should friend and follow on social media who was always on the front line in our community. And Brother Paul, I got to someday get you on the show to talk about the work you do in the neighborhood. So this salute and this applause is for Brother Paul Scott. Sister Zarifa, what do you say about that? Well, of course, I agree totally with Brother Willie. You know, I don't see that there's anything necessarily wrong with having some pride in yourself so that you can know yourself from, you know, the basic animal. Mm -hmm. However, it's an inordinate amount of pride that is the problem. And we sometimes mistake um, pride. And I don't know, you know, what it is that, well, I do know 
that we can't we got our emotions all over the place all you over know the, place. the honorable minister lewis farrakhan did a study guide for us that says rising above emotion into the thinking of god so when our brother mentioned earlier about us knowing ourselves that would help you to know that all of the foolishness that we're doing out here to one another is unnecessary because every time we're taught every time you look in the face of a black man you're looking in the face of god if you understood that truly would you really be shooting your brother over a pair of sneakers Come on. barbecue sauce fighting over a sandwich you know i saw um online the other day where a sister was um speaking about her ability to run a business and she was talking about how when Lamborghini stated that they don't do commercials because the people that they're trying to target don't are, are not sitting at home watching commercials. How about not that? Sitting at home watching TV. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get with these dummy tubes and we listen to rap music. Now, if we be truthful about it, the Caucasian is now doing country songs and it's all about loving and protecting his woman. How about that now? The black man is doing rap and, they, and and they're behind it because they control the industry they're doing Thanks. rap about how we are B, w's and b's and all this kind of thing so they flipped the script so when brother willie mentioned earlier that if we took the time to flood and be on the the proactive side of things flood the internet with conflict resolution flood the internet with what the minister says flood the internet with positive that's how they change the mindset of us even today that's how they do the marketing they drop seeds something else will come along come and on, water it we don't have to sit there and water it and nurture it something else will water it we just need to drop the seed be proactive get the information out there stop sitting back uh, re relying on someone else to do it for us as he mentioned Teach. this Teach. is another sign of self-hatred now watch come this on, brother said when he asked you if you want to see the violence stop in this city you, you, you upset about it, and rightfully so. He always puts that in there. Then he says, he said, you will share this. Share this flyer. Share this link. And we don't do it. Why don't we do it? Because we think he getting something out of it. Listen to us. Look at us. That's how trifling we can be with one another. That's mm. just being truthful. Now, if we don't want to tell the truth, then I'm in the wrong place. But that ain't got nothing to do with <laughs> us up here. The bottom line is, we think he oh he'll get so many likes he's trying to get paid oh he'll get you know that if somebody asks you think about it ask you as an individual to share this this link or to like this right they will they won't do it they'll go past it now some of us even who think we conscious are go past it then we got to say oh why won't i just hit the button and it's then go button. back that's that little rebellious spirit that's in us that's that little brown germ Matter of fact, watch this. Let's let's put it to the test. Let's put it, <laughs> we want everybody right now. We're gonna put what she just said to the test. Yes, we sir. want everybody to practice the three rules of watching the Rockwell Radio Show. Rule number one is hit the like and share button. Number two, tag somebody who needs to hear this. And step number three is subscribe to the Rockwell Radio <laughs> Show. That's right. <laughs> We're going to see who followed the three steps. <laughs> Our guest, our brother Willie Muhammad and sister Zareef Thanks, Muhammad, both noted experts in the subject. Well, they don't call themselves experts, but I'm going to call them experts <laughs> because they're dedicated to the craft, the cause, and the purpose of conflict resolution. Amen. Brother Willie, I want to thank you, Brother Neil. I, I want to go back to uh, social media. Brother Willie, in the introductory comments, you talked about how social media is often a culprit in the, and, is, and is also the enemy of, Sister Tisha, thank you, also the enemy of conflict resolution. Mm. You know, I thought about, I heard this pastor say this, and I was supposed to be invited to this school in Houston to speak about conflict resolution, and I wanted to make this point because they wanted me to come in and talk about the role that the internet plays. And I thought about what this pastor said. He says, what's ever in the pail will come up in the well. Hmm. I break that down. So you know a pail, right? When yes. they put it in the well, he said, what's ever in the pail is gonna come up in the well. So what's ever in the human being is gonna come out of the human being. So when you look at the internet, 
it's not per it's, it's not so much the internet and social media more than it is undeveloped and human beings who don't know themselves so now we have fallen to the level of acting like a savage right listen, listen. So, so whatever it is we bring our in we bring our corruptness to it and we corrupt it so now if if the human being will begin to be transformed we will see more positive and more constructive use of the internet right because as honorable minister lewis farrakhan has said you can use the internet to teach people but it's always in the mindset of the human being and if you're looking at human beings who have had their potential frozen and who have only been taught and read in the negative way of interacting with people so we use it to promote sex we use it to promote violence we use it to put guns and it plays on our vanity because i was sharing with a brother today brother dimitri i said man look at how powerful social media is and the vanity that it is i've seen people who are who are going live or people who got shot and it, their first thought instead of trying to get to the hospital was to go live and say man they my my, my ops just we, we crazy as hell <laughs> we crazy as hell but we're looking at a human being who is mentally dead right mm -hmm. and so this is as our sister said and that call goes to everybody the honorable minister lewis farrakhan has not abandoned the goal one of the one of the objectives of the 10 10 15 commemoration of the million man march which is conflict resolution every quarter i send the honorable minister lewis far kind of report about what cities i have been to been, been visited how many yes, people sir. we have trained so the work is there but we have to get it that when we see no people no longer talking about it that doesn't mean that we're stopping because the violence is still taking place and i say this to people because people see the no, the numerous killing and I, I say this this initiative is equivalent to a lifeguard seeing somebody drowning and they take the the life preserver and they throw it in the water and they say grab on to it right you know after hurricane katrina when people were being uh rescued i, I learned something from watching that about rescuing and salvation the national guard they've gone through the training they know how to fly the helicopters they know how to use the equipment but when they find somebody on the roof or somebody that's in the body of water, they put the rope down and they put the, the ladder down and they say, grab hold to it. Right. Put this rope around your waist. Put this vest on this way. Now, if the person who needs to be rescued say, I'm not grabbing onto the ladder, I'm not putting that vest on and they drown. Is it the life? Is it the National Guard or the lifeguard's fault that they drown? Ask no, that. It's their fault because they did not follow guidance if we work this conflict resolution initiative rightly we can stand before god and when god asks us what did you do when my people were killing themselves we can say oh for all Allah, their blood is not on our hands because come on came, man come out. on and come on what i'm talking to, about that's what we have to do that's what we don't realize the honorable minister lewis farrakhan has given us as believers and anybody else who are not in the nation an opportunity to get the blood of our people's hands off of us because we can say hey i extended my help to them they didn't do it if you score if you go through the scriptures everybody that jesus healed they had to do something when he found a man with the weathered hand he said stick out your hand when he found the man sleeping by the pool or pond for 38 years he said pick up your mat and walk Come on they now. have to do something and when we're coming out think about it, as our sister opened up reading the words of the minister we are willing to stand before guns ga gangs and guns that's right if we are willing to do that when we got our own family our own aspirations our own life the least our people can do is say let me give them an opportunity to help me resolve this conflict that is really over nothing Wow. Wow. Let me let me That's pause right. brother right there. Let me, let me pause brother right there. He he Big Dave, he kind of answered all of the rest of my questions already. Fantastic. <laughs> but Praise I, me to Allah. But I, I do want to get Sister Zarifa's take on the question. Is is okay. social media the the enemy of conflict resolution? It can be. It depends on how you handle it. You know, social media is not a bad thing in some regard because Brother Willie uses it and he uses it for positiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, so it depends on your level of maturity. 
But if you act on social media like you act out when you're killing people or you're trying to keep stuff stirred up, then yes, it would be bad for you. But you need to know your own limitation. Mm. The minister on, said right, this. Right. He said some scholars take the writing and say that God is going to place a temporary ruler, mm. a temporary God into power, right. but one that will create mischief and cause the shedding of blood. Mm. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it represents the Caucasian rulership. It has been a mischief making rulership that has shed blood, the blood of every member of the human family. Mm. It has destroyed not only human life, but animal, plant, sea, and all life. Mm. He called the blood shedder in the he's called the blood shedder in the book of Revelation. But God gave him that right. And then the minister asked the question: for what purpose? So you could see all that is in your cells. You are your own worst enemy, the minister mm. said. Listen. He said, did you know that the Caucasian only brought out of us what was in us? Mm. You cannot say the Caucasian made you a homosexual. Mm. He mm. brought out of you what was in you. All of the trouble we are in, that is the trouble that was in us. And he drew it out with his contrary way of civilization. We have a problem. And that problem means we have to be saved. And that's what Brother Willie is talking about every step of the way, showing wow. us how to be saved. Come on, come on. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, that's Sister Zarifa Mohammed. Praise be she Allah. is the co-host, let me get that right, <laughs> <laughs> of the 10 K Feelings and or she uh, teaching, man. No Higher Than This Woman podcast. And, and let a wife to Allah. <laughs> my wife, my wife texted me. She said, I, "It sounded like I said well, W H A L E, but I'm talking about a well that people yes, get, water get water out of." Out of. Yes, I, sir. That's what threw me. <laughs> that's that's what threw me. We're just talking about pronunciation and stuff when we first right. started, and, you right. know. So I'm, I'm talking about a bucket. If you get a bucket, you put it in the well. Was ever in that? Was ever in that well? Well, it's gonna come, come up, up in, in that, that bucket. Mm -hmm. I was so, so thrown. <laughs> you should have said something, man. So what? 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 what so, so the point of the story is, whatever is in us is going to come out of us. There you right. go. And you know, and that's and that's the thing. And 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 this is another thing as well. Like this, I tell people, and I've been guilty of this as well, that we don't even realize how we have indirectly contributed to the atmosphere or the environment of violence in this community. Come on, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. what I'm, I, and this is an example. We've heard this and we've said this, man, I wish I can go back to the days of old when we will fight instead of pick up a gun. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people, you've seen it on social media where people will post showing that they have stuff, gloves instead of guns. Mm -hmm. And so they're getting these brothers to put the boxing gloves on and they're fighting. We're saying like, yo, that's what you need to do. No, that is not the behavior of a civilized human being. Come on. That's right. So just because we go from having a conflict and I'm not going to shoot, but I'm going to put on boxing gloves or we're going to fight it out. No, we should. The, the civilized human being is a conflict. Let's sit down and see it, where the misunderstanding is before on, we get to right, putting on right. gloves and all of that type of stuff. But as, as one of the people said, we have the mark of the beast in our foreheads. So we resolve stuff in the beastly manner. Listen, wow. wow. You know, when you see when you see when we're watching National Geographic, you don't expect to see two lions say, Hey, let's meet tomorrow at noon under the tree so we can sit down and work out our issues. No, they That's go, right. they, they fight. But if we want to continue being law functioning on a lower level and not on a higher level as the glory of God, Teach, then we're going to continue to keep doing this. But a civilized human being, before they start throwing the the the, the, the fist and the, and the kicking with the feet, let's sit down and see where we've come to a misunderstanding. Wow! Wow! We we, we got we got three minutes left in the show. Wow! Okay. <laughs> Lord, can I? I want I want to squeeze in two more questions before we yes, let y'all go. Yeah, we all allow me two more questions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, one of them I'm going to direct at Brother Willie, because he is a, a, a man. Mm. Uh, and the other one will be directed at the both of you as a closeout. And I'm gonna tell you why, Sister Zarifa, why he should answer this question. <laughs> as men, Brother Willie, as brothers, you we, we ain't big on talking, mm. especially mm. if we got beef and feel that we right. Mm. 
and, and you said it earlier, we, we developed a whole phrase on site. Two words, mm-hmm. and everybody mm-hmm. that's black know what that means. Mm-hmm. <laughs> on site. When I see you. So how how do we if you can chime in too if you'd like. Yeah. But how, how do we as men, because we know us, we know once we off that, it's oh once we off the, the deep end, it's a wrap. How do we get this? How do we get men to get in the same room who got beef, let alone talk? One of the things it goes back to knowledge of self. And this is why. The, the body material that comes from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is so important because God would not have given us a mouth and a brain if we would, did not intend for us to use it. But what happens, what prevents us from using it, we can't control our emotions. So that's why that's that study right. got rising above emotion into the thinking of God. And you see an example, when they have talked to men who have been guilty of committing the heinous act of domestic violence, one of the things that they say is like, man, I can't, I just don't know what to say. So they respond with, with the, physically. Right. But mm-hmm. this is why we need to grow mentally and understand that mm-hmm. mentally we, we should be able to handle this. It should never be the first response is violent. Right. Violence. Mm-hmm. So Zarif, do you wish to comment on that? I do, because we <laughs> have just as many women who are not controlling themselves and they one. don't just sit back and go have tea you know you see you know they jumping on people mm-hmm. they jumping on one another but it is as brother said it's we have to rise above emotions and most of the time it's because we can't deal with what that individual says to us we don't mm-hmm. have a reply and we get so angry because we don't have a, a intelligent reply instead of us calming down and just say okay we need to work it out. No, we get angry because they've out talked us, which is how that domestic violence thing comes along. Because Come regardless to where you're going, that woman is talking. That's right. I don't know what she's talking about, but she talking. said something that hit that nerve. And when she hit that nerve, you didn't have no comment because you felt like it was true. So then you went in her mouth like an orthodontist. Now, mm-hmm. Come on, come on. That's what happens. So we have to learn how to control our emotions and rise into the thinking of God. And and our ego. Because a lot of yes. times we think, man, you played me. Listen, yes. I, like, if remember, as a nation of Islam, we talk about conflict resolution. We believe in self-defense. Right. So people can say whatever they want as long as they don't try to be an aggressor. So what that did, think about what the Mozambi Elijah Muhammad put us in the environment when he told us you can't have guns. Right. So that puts us in an environment where I got to find another way how to resolve this conflict. Mm-hmm. And most of the time, if a gun was not present in these circumstances, people will find another way. But the gun is the easy solution. So for a person who feels like nothing, when you get that pistol in your hand, you feel like you got the power. I got the power to make you bow down Whoa, to me. Come on. Wow. Wow. And that's from a human being who does not know himself. And I, I'm going to close on this. Malcolm X in his autobiography said one time a man when he was working on the train, this white guy was drunk and he wanted to fight Malcolm. And Malcolm said, if he'd have gotten into a fight, he would have lost his job. So Malcolm said this, he told the man, you want to fight me? Take off your suit, your jacket. The man drunk took off his jacket. You want to fight me? Take off your tie. You want to fight me? Take off your shirt. And Malcolm had almost had the man naked and everybody on the train was laughing at him. But look at what Malcolm said after that. He said that he had realized that he could have not have beaten that man as bad with a bat in his hand, as bad as he had beat him on that day with his mind. Wow. Come and that's, on, what we, wow. that's what we need. Knowledge of self. Wow. Wow. And Big you know, day. Brother Vaughn, go before, ahead. before go ahead. we go, you know, and the state of Georgia has passed the law now that you don't have to have a permit to carry a gun unconcealed. That's right. You know, so we have to be, we have to outsmart the enemy. It's always that now gro- we got grocery shortages. Our people are not um, storing up food. They're not storing up water. Where do you think they're going when they can't get food and water? You know, then the the um the the the, the tension heightens, and then now you got you can walk around and carry a gun. 
Where is that so, going to end up? <clears throat> exactly. So we have to be mindful and outsmart the enemy. So we need to start flooding the airways. So no, I do not think social media is bad if we use it properly. Yes, we ma'am. need to start educating our people in these matters on social media. Use the platform where they are. But you notice Facebook now will stop you. You get the same 25 people to talk to. So you do need people to share because they're not sharing it. They're not letting it go everywhere. And so we definitely like have to. That's right. And hit the like button and the share button and then subscribe. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Guess what we're about to do one more time for the end of this show. We're going to give everybody one more opportunity to hit the like and share button. Tag somebody. And last but not least, subscribe. Those are the three steps of watching the Rockwell Radio Show. We want to thank everybody. We want to thank in particularly the two of you for joining us today. But I have one more question for you. If you allow us just five more minutes of your time. Yes, Sister, I she am. wanted to say something. Sister wanted to make a comment. Oh, go right ahead. I just want to make the comment to please um, log on to the website for the 10,000 Fearless. It's the actual number 10,000 Fearless of the South, the number two dot com. This 10,000 Fearless of the South, the number two dot com. And Dave, you know, if you can, make a banner of that, Dave. In real time, make a banner of that and put it on the screen. Say it one more time, dear sis. 10,000, that's the number, fearless of the South, two, the, the number two dot com. And you know, Brother Vaughn, they're actually doing community patrol and everything in Atlanta and the various cities that we have the 10,000 fearless in. Facts. And Brother Sharif has designed another... Um, uniform for them to go out that says on, the yeah. 10,000 fearless on it. So if you want that, please, please pay attention to the website and make sure that you order those uniforms to go out so that we can be uniformed and our people can see us. And last but not least, do not forget to get a conflict resolution in every city. So Brother Willis' phone number should be blowing up right about now. Come on. We got to do it, man. Sister Zarif, you actually answered the last question I was about to ask. <laughs> oh, yes. <sir. laughs> you you really just did. Um, so having said that, um, what I want to do is just put it to Brother Willie. The question was going to be this. What resources? As a matter of fact, I want to go before I say that, I want to say this. This is why I've been asking you all to tag people, because I want them particularly to hear this, what we're about to go and what she just really just shared. Tag organization members, tag church members, tag somebody who has some level of influence or leadership that can use the tools that are being shared in this episode of the Rockwell Radio Show. Brother Willie and Sister Zarifa, if you want to add on to this, you certainly may. What tools, tips, or resources can you offer organizations that want to participate, that want to slow down the bloodshed in our neighborhoods? You know, we are always available to come into the cities and do conflict resolution trainings to churches, for lodges, fraternities, sororities, so more people can have it. Because guess what? Even within organizations, even within churches, even within mosques, temples, you have people that have conflict, right? So the more people we can have trained in how to resolve conflict, then that's more ambassadors that can be peacemakers. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And salute to Brother Shar- Abdul, brother, brother Minister Sharif. He has not, he has not gotten off of it, brother. He's still brother, pushing it. And I still get brother. calls from people who Brother Sharif told me to give you a call. We got to set up the conflict resolution. What we have to do is we have to be serious about the follow-up. And I think that's where some of what many of us are lacking at as it relates to following up on what we're being asked to do because sometimes when the when the when when the applause is not there some of us stop stop we stop working absolutely and i mentioned that you know it doesn't matter if you don't hear from brother willie or you don't hear from brother sharif the work is still there we shouldn't have to you you know the work is there because somebody just died in your city i don't even know what city it is but we know somebody died there we know the work is there but the minister told us this and then i'm gonna i'm I'm gonna stop he said that we're living in iniquity. Mm. Mm. That means that we're sinning and liking it. Mm. Mm. That's now, and then you say, well, no, I don't like sin. You don't like sin? Are you sinning? Mm. If you're sinning, you like it. Because mm. we don't do anything we don't like. Mm. So we're going back to it because we like it. That's what mm. he means. 
so mm. we can stop saying no i don't like sin are you sinning mm. are you lying mm. are you cheating are you mm. committing adultery mm. are you committing mm. fornication mm. what are you doing you i may not know your sin but you know mm. your sin mm. so we need to stop sinning Clean start to up. fall in love with ourselves. therefore we can learn how to love one another true true Clean it up. We can't clean up our community until we clean up ourselves. Lord, That's have right. mercy. I want to thank brother. I got the two student ministers. Oh, praise is due to a lot, man. I want to thank brother Willie Muhammad. I want to thank sister Zarif Muhammad. Praise I want to give you all the final word as we close of where people can find you online, follow you, and support your your podcast, brother Willie. Then sister Zarif will tell you. Willie Muhammad on Facebook, brother underscore Willie on Instagram. And if you want to get this conflict resolution rolling, reach out to us, man. So let's get, we can get it. It's not a nation of Islam thing. Our community needs it. That's right. Praise be to Allah. And it's 10,000 fearless of the South com is where you can um, see all about the 10,000 fearless. We can order your uniforms at 678-914-4644. Sister, we'll make sure that you get what you need. I'm Dr. Zarifa Muhammad on Facebook and that on everything else. Twitter, um, Instagram, and all of that. You Thank heard you. it right here on the Rockwell Radio Show next week. Right here on the Rockwell Radio Show, we're doing something different. We're having a live listening party of Gat Turner's new album, The Resurrection of Gat Turner. He'll be on the show next week, and we'll be playing excerpts from his album that's out right now. Big Dave, what's, here's what I want you to do. I want you to close us out. We're running that Gat Turner piece, and after that, take us right out of here. This is DJ Rockwell, and we will see y'all next week here on the Rockwell Radio Show. Salute. Oh, okay, baby. I think we're in the right place. Uh, yeah, can you tell us what room Gat Turner is in, please? Room 1930? Okay, thank you. Come on, baby. Let's walk. Let's walk. Let's in one of these rooms down here. I know. I know. I know. But he's going to be okay. You hear me? He's going to be okay. Yeah, it's tough. He can make it. Damn. Here's my man. Oh. Yo. Somebody get a nurse. Call, call a doctor. Somebody do something. Call a doctor now. Yo, baby, he's... Stop crying. This is Gat. Gat, get up. Get up. Get up. Come on, Gat. You'll make it. You can make it, Gat. Get up. Tell him you're not dead. You're not dead. Gat Turner, tell him you're not dead. 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 I did. When we come about this quarantine, niggas better run my bread and run tell that. To whoever just don't mix falsehood with actual facts or false prophets with demand the truth. Niggas got a little juice, ain't got no fruit. Niggas got a few hoes, ain't got no love. Just because we cuz don't make us blood and a lot of trust. See, if fam ain't always who a nigga thought they was, don't always do what you thought they do. Rock well, well, well. I like to know, are you really ready for some super dynamite soul? <laughs> <laughs>